in the last few years, we have a tendency to have a ridiculous power uh, VTXs, analog VTXs on the market. Like I remember like four or five years ago, I think it was around five years ago before COVID, I got the AKK 1.2 watts VTX. Wow, it was so big, massive, huge heatsink, so much power and only slightly bigger range than anything else. It was 1.2 watts. Everybody was like, wow. Now, now if you want to, you can get like crazy amount of power VTXs, like crazy amount of power VTXs. Uh, AKK, of course, because why not? The Foxir has something with three watts of power. I have over here the... Uh, Gap RC, uh, Gap RC, 2.5 watts output power on the analog VTX. By the way, this this VTX looks really like like super super good. A solid uh, aluminium casing. It has the integrated fan. Uh, you see that this is a nice build quality. And I think the AKK has something like crazy super crazy right now three watts you see you can get three watts you can have 10 watts akk alpha 10 you can have 10 watt 5.8 gigahertz vtx and i ask the question why i know why war when you are in the rf noise and active jamming rich environment the strong vtx is basically your only chance to to be able to to get through the noise and get some there might be like this might give you this extra edge over over somewhere to be able to like fly like 500 meters further towards the jamming device but for us the hobby use this is useless like, no, not only that, it will not get you much farther because the rule of, not the rule of a thumb, the physics says if you double the power, you only increase the theoretical range by the square of two. So if you have one watt VTX, which is crazy high power, and by the way, you need a ham license or just a radio license, basically everywhere when you look to be able to legally use this thing, and you go to two watts of power, you will not go twice as far. You will only go 1.42 times as far as the one watt. And then to really go twice as far, so let's say that you hit 10 kilometers on one watt, and you want to go two kilometers. You don't want to go to 2 watts, because this will not get you to 20 kilometers. You have to go with 4 watts of power. Plus, I expect that this thing heats up like crazy. <laughs> this thing has to be so hot. I have. I don't see anywhere... Oh, there's a heatsink. Come on, just look at the size of this bloody heatsink and the fan. Like, <laughs> and it has 4 mounting holes for the easier installation. Uh, like crazy. That's crazy. The only, the only practical thing I really see that this can make make sense is 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 war. When you have active jamming on the 5.8 uh, gigahertz, and you don't really care about the regulations. But if you are just flying recreationally as the hobby or even long range, no. Like this, this, this is like ah uh ah. -uh. This is uh, uh this will not get you really anywhere. And I I wonder how much power this really drains from your battery. Because this is 10 watts of the output power. So I expect the minus uh, energy conversion losses. This thing probably pulls like 20, 25, maybe even 30 watts of power and dissipates majority of this power as the as the waste heat. AKK really likes to build stuff that <laughs> looks crazy cool, but is practically, I think, useless, at least for the hobby use.